Alright, today we are going to talk about a controversial topic. Dielectric grease on electrical contacts. Good idea, bad idea. And we're going to test to see if it actually causes any sort of resistance. And hopefully we'll put this to rest. No doubt, you've all heard the... There's two school of thought of using dielectric grease on any sort of electrical contact. Now, dielectric... Uh, obviously means it's an insulator, non-conducting of electricity, and at face value that makes sense. You do not want to put that on any sort of contact, uh, electrical contact, because, well, it will insulate the contact. However, um, there are schools of thought that when the contacts come together or when you make a mechanical connection, it pushes all that grease out of the way and you get metal on metal contact, um, and you, of course, will have a proper electrical contact there uh, but the question is does there is there any sort of film in between because again the idea be behind using any sort of grease on a contact is to prevent corrosion prevent water prevent oxygen combining and corroding the contact which will definitely increase the resistivity of said contact but if we were to uh, put this on a contact push the contact together would we see any noticeable difference in resistance so that's what we aim to test here. Um, now, obviously the best way to do that is to put a blob of grease onto a contact and make contact, test the resistivity before and after and see if there was any difference in resistance while we're uh, before and after. I unfortunately do not have a fancy device that will actually test very small amounts of resistance. Multimeters, they are fantastic at measuring, you know, all kinds of different things. But when it comes to ohms and sorry, milliohms specifically, they are terrible. Even this fluke here, uh, the specifications, it can go down to 0.1 ohm. That's 100 milliohms, and that's not good enough for what we want to test here. But what it is fantastic at testing is millivolts. It can actually go down to one millivolt. That's a thousandth of a volt. How does that help us? Uh, we're not testing volts. We want to test milliohms here. Well, I'll pull a piece of chalk here. Using our fancy formula here, V equals I R. That's a terrible R, by the way. Obviously not an English major here. V in volts, I in current, or amps, and R is in resistance. If we were to say take a two contacts, and I'll just use this as an example here, and I put a known amount of current through these contacts, and then measure the voltage drop, I can actually determine what R is. Because if I rearrange this, for example, R equals V over I. So again, we're going to measure that and we know what that is and that way we can get our our value. So let's uh, let's get set up here. We're also too, we're going to use is this guy here. This is our little bench top uh, power supply. Not a fantastic device, but it's going to get the job done. So let's, uh, let's get everything hooked up here and uh, let's see if we can get this test underway. Okay, first up, I'm just going to clean uh, off here. Just going to spray some rubbing alcohol. Clean the mat off. Oh, oh see, it takes the paint right off too. Uh, make sure their contacts are nice and clean. Feel like a magician see nothing here on the table nothing up my sleeve and I'm also going to clean these off so we know that we're not starting off with any sort of contamination all right first thing we want to do is we want to get our known current uh, what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to use again as I say I'm going to use a bench power supply here and 
I just got some these they just got banana plugs on both ends we're going to plug in here plug in here and what I want to do is I want to dial this in to one amp uh, why one amp and that again going back to the the formula of V equals IR if we're trying to find R it's going to equal V over I. Now in this case, if V equals, or sorry, oh, terrible. If I equals, pa, fail, one amp, that means whatever we see here on the display is the number of ohms. So if we see uh, four millivolts, we know that that actually is four milli ohms. Again, because again we're dividing it over one. It, it's just to make our just to make our math easy, simple. If we don't have to do any sort of calculation. If you want to do this test on something else that you're running, and whatever it is that you have will not handle an amp directly, you can adjust I to whatever you want. So you want to bring that down to to ten milliamps. Go ahead. Just know that you're going to have to do some mathematics here where you know you're going to be dividing over um, again if you say one it down to 10 milliamps you'd have to divide whatever you see here on the screen by uh, 0 0.01 uh, so just something to note there um, anyway so let's get this cleaned off okay we got our Connection stuck here into the amp hole. We're going to turn the amp uh, limiting knobs all the way down to the bottom here. And jam them in here. Oh, that's a little short. All right. And we're going to turn this on to DC amps. And then what we'll do is we'll slowly just bring these up here. So I'm just going to bring the course adjustment up a little bit and then bring up. Bring the course up a bit more. This is what I don't like about this, this bench top power supply here is that it's, it's finicky. And then you keep adjusting, you keep adjusting, nothing happens, nothing happens, and then your workpiece explodes. Hmm. This is less than ideal. blown a fuse uh, so you guess this might have had a high end rush again terrible okay let's uh, it's gonna pause here I just want to see if I actually have blown the fuse on this here so give me one minute please all right sorry about that uh, it turns out when I was adjusting this I didn't realize I actually turned the voltage all the way down I were to so set the voltage there to 12.56, just 12 volts. My car system, why not? Anyways, so I've got the current turned all the way down now. Plug in our meter. Again, we're using the the amp section here. So I just want to give it a little bit of current. Oh, already too much. So we want to try and get this down to get as close to one amp as we can here. So we're just going to Oh, oh, back it off just a wee bit. Let's see what happens if that stabilizes. More. Honestly, I think that's as good as close as we're really going to get with this. All right, perfect. So, disconnect that. Unplug the leads. 
very important. <laughs> when you're adjusting things here, I don't know, I've done this many times. Uh, move the meter over to something, or I've left the uh, the test lead left in the amp there. Do a volt meeting and pop goes the fuse there. So um, learn from my mistakes. All right. So the test we're going to conduct is going to be with these. I'm using these because I uh, they're a cheaper lead and I don't use them in my meter. I, I never trusted these, so but good enough for what we're doing here. So now if I were to test, touch these together, I'm going to get an amp running through these, these test leads. So now what we want to do is we're going to do, uh, sorry, we're going to um, measure the voltage drop across these here. So especially when we touch them or when we're measuring through, say, our, um, our dielectric grease, we'll actually measure the voltage drop from this perspective here because we just really care about what is the, uh, the dielectric grease doing here. So we are going to connect... leads here and I'm going to leave it in the DC oh, scale oh, I'll move this here over free to read and range we're going to lock the range um, how many volts now nah, watch it there we go Let's see how this what this looks here for us. So I will connect that clip there and that clip there. So now when I touch these together, I'm going to measure the voltage drop basically just between these points here. So this will actually um, will tell us roughly what we're we're looking at here and as a milli um, uh, a milliohm drop here. And then this, all right, and that makes sense. We're seeing 12.6 volts because uh, this, the meter right now, is obviously the best path. There's probably I, I don't know what the actual resistance is in there. It doesn't matter. But when I touch these together, so I am seeing. Oh, that's a sorry six volts. Let's actually let's change the range. Sorry, I'm trying to look over here. All you can see is glare on my side. I can't really see the screen. All right, let's see what that gives us. Nice fat spark. All right. So that's about three milliohms we're seeing here. Um, that's just straight up without the, we'll get another test. So repeatability, another three milliohms. Oh. Oh, because I'm touching the side there. All right, so that was about seven-ish. Uh, three again. What about just the tippy tips? Woo! Sparks. All right. So we're going to see about three to five, up to seven milliohms there. So that's what we're, we're testing without... What That's just with the metal-on-metal metal contact here. So now... We get a blob of goop here. So again, this we're not. It's the dielectric grease. We should see zero connectivity or conductivity through this, being dielectric grease and all. So if I stick the ends in there, so far so good. I'm just going to slowly bring them together while they're in the goop here. So a little spark. Four to five milliamps. Or sorry, um, uh, milliohms. Sorry. 
And we'll do that again. This time, I'm going to try and not just touch the tips. I'm actually going to try and get a nice metal to metal contact there. Three milliohms again. Oh, another little spark. There's five milliohms. What happened there? Three milliohms. Six to eight. Oh, that's sorry. That was me uh, when I was had them touching underneath there. I, I lifted them up and I broke the contact. All right, let's try that again. All right. So not really seeing much difference. Let's even try this out now outside that blob. Three milliohms. Sorry about that, slid right off. Three milliohms. Three milliohms. Oh, some sparks. Three milliohms. All right. So that doesn't seem, the dielectric grease does not seem to affect the resistance of the circuit. I said, whoops, touch the. Uh... Sorry, I slid off there. Try it again. Three milliamps. All right. Well, why is that? So we know that by the first test here that this is not conductive, this material. There isn't. But why, when we have it on the test connector here and we touch it, does it actually work? Well, what happens is that this is non, this fluid here is not compressible. Uh, we're not getting into fluid dynamics, we're not getting into, there's, there's no math here, but really what's happening is that as these two contacts are coming together, it just squeezes the, the dielectric grease out between the joints, so that essentially there's just metal on metal contact. It's not riding on a, or maybe riding on a very, very thin film and there might be a little bit more resistance there, but nothing that we can really measure here. And quite frankly, um, when you're dealing with, say, connections on, con sorry, excuse me, connections on a car or connections on a, uh, a battery or anything like that, uh, we're starting getting into fractions of a, of a milliohm. That's really not going to be the end all, the, the end of the world there. But um, yeah, so that's why dielectric grease is actually a good idea to put on electrical contacts especially anything that is exposed to the elements because again once you make that that contact it's going to squeeze all the grease out from what's touching metal on metal but anything that's not touching is still going to have grease in it which is going to protect it from the elements so you're not going to get any sort of corrosiveness um, which will could force the connection apart or uh, break your connection altogether so um, I don't know. I, I, to me, that is enough for me to say, yeah, I'm going to be make sure that I keep using my dielectric grease on any connection that's going to be going out on the car there, like battery, trailer connections, anything like that. Um, yeah. Let me know what you think. Take care.